Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society, and I'm going to cause some gasma right now. How about that <laughs> with my gas stove? I'm going to make some soup here, and uh, I'm going to use my gas stove. Now, one day this may be illegal, but tonight it's not. So I just uh, sauteed a few onions and garlic here and some potatoes. Just going to add in a few other items. Um, you know, the, the National Observer had an article that was headlined, uh, GASMA. And of course, I don't know if people are aware of it, but the uh, climate activists are using exactly the same tactic that they used for coal phase out which is that use of fossil fuels causes asthma in children and oh my god we're all gonna die. Now if you look at life expectancy in Alberta over the past 50, 100 years you'll find that it's shot straight up. People in Alberta live well into their 70s and 80s. I think the average life expectancy is 78. Um, and the places where people don't live into their 80s are places like Africa, China, India, because they don't have natural gas stoves. They have to cook at home over uh, a little bundle of sticks on an open flame in a little hut and they're breathing in all of that carbon monoxide, they're breathing in all the secondary aerosols that come from burning wood and um, they have a very premature death rate in all those countries and in China, in rural China, people gather dung in huge mountainous piles beside their huts or their little houses for winter because uh, that's what they they burn in those distant provinces or in many places there, they have what they call a, a kung bed, which is kind of a, a flat clay bed uh, that's hooked up to um, a wood furnace or a coal furnace. So the heat, it's actually a brilliant idea. The heat from it goes right into, into under the bed and it warms the whole area so you have a nice cozy sleep. Uh, but again, you know, you're getting a lot of those secondary aerosols. Now, we did a um, report during coal phase out, and we found that actually the biggest polluter is Mother Nature. <laughs> and you'd be very surprised to find out what kinds of things Mother Nature puts in the air. And many of the things that um, we think humans are solely responsible for they're actually things that Mother Nature does. Like, for instance, when there's a big lightning storm, lots of nitrogen oxide, when, uh, which also comes from the emission of cars, and some of it comes from a gas stove too, but it's nominal, and this is very short term. But there are huge amounts of NOx that come from big lightning storms. Um, you'll find in the fall especially, uh, this was something that totally surprised us. We, uh, we asked Aerobiology to send us a list of all the kinds of spores and pollens that circulate seasonally throughout the year in Edmonton. So they sent us the statistics for 2011. And my gosh, there was one that was right off the charts at the, uh, I think it was in October. It was like so high. When you look at the graph, you know, I thought there was a mistake. Like I thought the, the Excel chart was off or something. So we, we called them and said, you know, is this for real? And they said, oh yeah, this is a, um, what's it called? It's cladosporium. It's a kind of um, spore or mold that comes uh, in the fall from, uh, you know, the rotting of vegetation and such like. Uh, and uh, it's highly reactive for people with asthma. I, I suppose it might be kind of like 
You know, some people when they smell pine scented cleaners, the volatile organic chemicals in those often will trigger a reaction as well. So um, the other thing we found out then is that wildfires, see at the time they were saying, you know, we shouldn't use coal because it's a terrible, terrible thing. We found out that wildfires emit a thousand times the PM 2.5 of a coal plant. And in fact, when you look at a map of Alberta, you find that there's virtually um, very, very, very little asthma or respiratory disorders near the coal plants. But there's lots in farming communities because of the dust. And that's one of the biggest contributors to air pollution here, especially in the fall, is simply road dust and agricultural dust. And that's just a fact of life. But, you know, overall, I mean, I'm not trying to diminish the difficulties of living with asthma. I have good friends who have it, and it can be very, very difficult, very stressful, and, and unfortunately sometimes fatal. But many of them also have gas stoves, and that is not what triggers their asthma. <laughs> so um, I think we have to take these climate activists with a bit of a grain of salt, if you know what I mean. In fact, we can do that right now. Because I noticed that what happened is that as soon as on, as soon as on um, Twitter people started talking about this, boom, all of a sudden people also were talking about electric stoves and they were promoting induction stoves and they were saying, well, if you don't want to make a big investment in induction stoves, well, you can simply buy a one, one burner induction hot plate and test it uh, And from Amazon. So, you know, here we have Amazon's going to benefit, the induction stove manufacturer's going to benefit, the electric stove manufacturer's going to benefit. It's the same old climate demarketing program. I've mentioned before, start looking at climate change as a marketing concept, a very sophisticated marketing concept. And then a lot of things start to make sense. Because here these guys are gonna make more money by demarketing a perfectly good gas stove and pushing their induction stove, which as it turned out in 2019, wasn't selling very well. How about that? So those are my thoughts. I think that People should be free to cook on whatever kind of stove they want. And I think the media should be quite critical, lot, much more critical thinking about um, these uh, activist claims. Rather than giving them front page news, why don't you check into what they're really all about. So I'm going to just turn up my gas stove here <laughs> and cook my soup and enjoy it on this cold Alberta winter night. So I hope that you'll enjoy your gas stove, if that's what you prefer, as well. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Oh, I think I'll have a little bit of ginger ale. A little schnapps, right? Let's not carbon tax Canada dry.